If you ask me who is my favorite young new media artist, I would nominate Max Hessler. His artwork has won numerous international awards. Today, I'm honored to have a Skype chat with Max, talking about his artwork experience parallels and his artistic attitudes. Hi, Max. Hello. So I still remember your solo exhibition in the Gata Institute. Could you please introduce your artwork theory parallels briefly to the audiences who haven't managed to see the video at the scene? Yeah. Uh, so Serial Parallels is a film about Hong Kong. And it uses uh, a large format photography and then uh, basically reanimates the, uh, the photographs of uh, buildings. Uh, I mean, they're all high-rise buildings. Uh, a lot of them are public housing estates. And uh, basically each floor of each building is moved one frame as you progress to the next frame. So through that process, it animates the, um, the facade in a quite interesting way that everything sort of comes to life even though it's concrete. It's, uh, you know, fixed, but through the animation process everything starts to, to move and uh, it uh, reveals quite an interesting uh, perspective on the built environment. Actually, I found the repetition structure of the Hong Kong houses is quite interesting after the editing in the video and especially I noticed that there is some clothes that hang out at the balcony. It's quite interesting to see that in the video. So how did you take notice of these particularities in HK? How did it grab your interest? Coming from Europe where there isn't such an environment, so what immediately struck me when I first moved to Hong Kong is this, that is very, very built up. Sometimes you can't even see the horizon uh, because of all the buildings. But at the same time, there's a lot of repetition in the buildings. So a lot of the buildings are actually the same or look like they're built from the, from the same model. And uh, there are obviously like some differences in the color, sometimes in the design. So uh, creating sequences of that seemed like, a, like an interesting approach. A noticeable or stick in your mind are the things that are not repeating, that are not uniform, which is all the, as you said, the clothing. On the one hand is uniformity and repetition, but on the other hand is markers of individualism, of lived life uh, within that. And I also kind of interested in the music, the making of music, because it seems to me that the music has made the film quite enjoyable. So what has made you to decide to choose this music? It was quite a difficult process to arrive at that point. In the beginning, I had some different ideas about the sound that maybe it should be less monotonous. But as I was kept developing the work, I realized that it needs this kind of machine-like aesthetic that really brings out the, the machinistic or you know repetitive nature of the building. So it was a kind of long negotiation from something where at the beginning I thought the sound or music could maybe accentuate the differences to in the end saying no actually the sound really needs to underline the you know, it's unchanging at the same time the sound goes through all these different modulations so the sound does something similar to what the what the image does I'm very happy with the result it, I think it merges very well the idea of repetition plus change and to really create something that is also quite dark. The film to me has, has these two sides. On the one side, it's a kind of this dystopian future. On the other hand, it's a celebration of this actual lived reality, the present of Hong Kong. I have this feeling that uh, both the image and the sound give me a feeling of abstraction. And I noticed that this abstraction, the concept has reappeared in many of your artworks. So is this your way of thinking and making artworks? Mm, yes, 
that's correct. I think abstraction always plays a, an important part in my work. Some of my work is completely abstract. Uh, other works uh, will work with this abstractedness or this idea of abstracting uh, from reality, from, from the real world. But I think what's interesting about uh, abstraction is that it gives you a, a removal from the everyday, you know, certain alienation uh, from from lived experience. And by doing that, it it enables you to maybe look at things anew or to to rethink, you know, how things are or how they should be. I have one particular question about the arrangement of the setting at the show. I mean, the show at the Gotter Institute. I noticed that you utilize some small screens, like very, very small screens, to display your artwork. So what's special about this arrangement? Uh, what we did at the Goethe Institute at my exhibition last year was to show the main film, Serial Parallels, and then show these uh, small screens uh, around the room uh, eight or nine screens, which have very short loops. Um, so, some of these loops were a part of the film. They're kind of just pulled out to create a moment that repeats and repeats and repeats, so that uh, as an audience you can look at, at that specific moment and you know enjoy that that part of the film over and over again. The other motivation has to do with the fact that. As we were making the film, there were many parts that actually didn't end up in the final film because we were shooting a lot all over Hong Kong and you find some, you know, very beautiful moments, interesting moments, but they don't make it in the film because they don't fit into the overall flow, into the overall structure. So having those separated out on the little screens allowed us to, you know, show some of those moments that otherwise uh, wouldn't have made it into the film. Like more humorous uh, little, you know, vignettes of, for example, the uh, like primary school where there are little, you know, colorful stickers on, on a window that, pe that keep popping up, or a scene with clothing that was hanging outside of a building that is flapping in the wind. So, you know, having those separated out kind of gives the audience opportunity to look at these little more humorous, more human scenes and expand the big film kind of into the room. So that was the idea. You mentioned humorous in your artwork. To a Chinese audience like me, it's a little bit sarcastic because the Hong Kong housing condition is quite small, like a lot of people squeeze in a very, very tiny room to have their life. So this kind of humor, do you understand it like a little bit dark? Or could you explain more on how you reflect on this housing condition of Hong Kong? Of course, it's both. The film shows this quite horrible side of living in concrete uh, blocks. But at the same time, people live there and everyone, you know, has their own life. So it's a way of humanizing. It's dark, but at the same time, it's real and people are still happy. I don't want to paint a happy picture of Hong Kong housing situation because, you know, it's, it's very harsh. It's very expensive. But I think compared to some public housing uh, experiments in, in Europe, for example, public housing seems to work reasonably well in Hong Kong not much crime, for example, in developments, whereas in the UK or in Germany, for example, I think uh, public housing usually has at least this image of, you know, have, having a high crime rate and being very, you know, desolate uh, living conditions. And in Hong Kong, you know, while it is hard and while, you know, people don't have a choice either, it seems, at least on the surface, that it's a much more healthy way of living together in some other places. I have one question about the shooting techniques, because uh, you know, like the blocks, the buildings are quite high. How you managed to shoot it, like uh, in a horrific viewpoint? Did you shoot it on another building, like a crossroad, or how did you manage to do it? 
It's a good question. Question uh, I got a lot. The best way of shooting it, obviously, is from a higher vantage point, from a building across or from a mountain. But also, we use digital distortion technique in Photoshop, where you can uh, basically readjust the angle of what you shot. So even if it's uh, shot from ground level, it can be readjusted digitally to make it straight. And What's quite interesting with this process is that the more extreme the angle is from which it is shot and then kind of corrected digitally, the more there is a distortion also in the image itself that is, comes from the viewpoint. So if it's shot from you know, further below, there will be more of a distortion in the uh, perspective distortion, which is then corrected. But then if it's reanimated, this distortion is still part of the building and it causes the building in the animation to shift and uh, become almost more fluid looking. So also quite interesting to use this to accentuate this idea of concrete becoming fluid. Do you treat your artwork as a channel or as a media to communicate with your audiences? Like uh, you have this idea or uh, you have this message you want to convey and then through your artwork, it gets to your audience. What message do you want to convey? I mean, your emotions or your ideas or other things? Any artwork it communicates something to an audience and something that communicates isn't always very clearly defined at the beginning of the process. So let's say if I'm making a film like Serial Parallels, so the final product is a kind of negotiation between myself, my initial impulse and, and the material, what was there and how that can be molded into something that makes sense or that uh, creates something new or gives the audience something to think about. The starting point of a project and the end result of the project are you know linked but there's a whole journey that kind of leads to the end product that i'm also part of i'm particularly interested in the emotion part so do you think like your emotion gets to influence the audience's emotion when it's embedded in your artwork i think sometimes but the audience also bring their own emotions to the work or the, their own preconceptions, their own, you know, viewing history, their, their own cultural uh, history. So I've noticed that, you know, showing serial parallels in Europe elicits quite a different response to a Hong Kong audience, for example. So for a Hong Kong audience, people are familiar with the material at hand. I think more in celebration of the environment, more enjoyment of the, of the movement for a European or Western audience who are not so familiar with this kind of a built environment, it becomes much more dark and uh, oppressive in its reading. And for me, that's really interesting. Obviously, I'm Western, I'm here, so for me, it's, it's both. But it depends a lot what the audience brings to it. And for me, that's the interesting part of uh, abstract work or that works with abstraction on some level is that people can bring their own uh, interpretation to the work. I want to go deeper into this question in the direction of uh, social media. So as we have already discussed uh, that artworks can be part of your public self. So how do you utilize social media to build your public self? I mean, do you use social media in a different way compared with ordinary people? Do you have some strategy to use it to make your audiences have some kind of perception of you as an artist? Most of my social media relates to my work. I don't use social media that much for other purposes. So if I tweet or post something on Instagram or on Facebook, then it usually relates to my work. Although, you know, having said that, I, I have, let's say, a work channel and then I have a private channel. So my, you know, private Facebook is, I, do, I don't use it for work. I just use it like anyone else would do. But then I try and separate that out from my Facebook page, for example. So on my page, I would, you know, post things that, that relate to my work. Actually, I have done two interviews already 
I also asked the question about social media, their usage. I found that artists is like more cautious about their usage of social media. They don't want to disclose too much about their personal life and they prefer people to know themselves through their works. So is it the same for you? What do you think? I would subscribe to that as well, yes. Because the important part of being an artist is to make artwork, not to be an artist. So it's less about how do I live my life? I don't think people are very interested in that. But what is the work I make? And maybe someone might be interested in that. But it is important for artists to not be too shy to promote their own work, especially for younger artists. If you're starting out, if you're serious about having a career uh, as an artist, then you better make sure that you can continue doing it. This is really about the make work. Actually, you kind of anticipate what I want to ask next. I want to ask you, what do you want to say to young new media artists? So you just already mentioned that you want them to share their works on social media. So what else do you want to encourage them? How can they establish their work as a new media artist? Promote your work. Uh, if you have new work, trust in your in yourself, in your instincts. Don't expect to be the next big thing, to be discovered, to be picked up by a gallerist, to you know win uh, all the awards, because that's not going to happen, realistically, you know. So I think the main thing is to you know trust your instincts and to keep making work. And then if you have something new, you know, try to promote it, try to put it out, see if you can get some press, you know, if you can get into a show. But uh, don't expect things to just appear, to just materialize as soon as you leave art college or, I don't know, after a year or two years or five years. I think it's a long, you know, it's a lifelong process to make work. There's no easy way to do it. You just have to keep making and trust in yourself and then you know once you've finished something then also put it out and don't be shy about it it's, it's done you know it's don't put it in the drawer try to get it out these are the key things for me like it's hard work so just keep working on at it it's promotion or you know playing the game of of you know going to openings talking talking to people uh, sending your work out, this you know, that professional practice part of, of the job. Of course, you know, try to you know embrace new things and improve yourself, get better over time. But don't expect something to just happen because it wouldn't.